Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Borkor, your host for this episode. Just a quick episode on some updated news stories that I want to get through. And I hope everybody's doing okay, staying safe, and continuing to follow the EV Revolution. So let me get right into some of the stories I have for you today. Now, the first story today is the global plug-in numbers. Finally, the numbers are out for 2021. And as expected, it was a great year, great growth year. Plug-in electric car sales totaled uh, just over 6.7 million units. And that's compared to 3.1 million units for the entire year of 2020. So well over 108% year over year growth which is, of course, excellent. Now, the total, put that in perspective, the total light-duty vehicle global sales were just under 70 million. So that means that the EV market share has increased to 8.3%. Of course, the top EV brand, everybody knows, was Tesla. That sold just over 936,000 units globally in 2020. And to round out the other top five brands for uh, for plug-in sales was BYD from China, SGMW, which is the SAIC, GM, and Wuling, of course, led by the Wuling Mini. Volkswagen had a great year for plug-ins, and as did BMW. So again, just to look back, folks, a great year for plug-in sales. I don't know if we'll see a doubling effect this year. And as I mentioned in my kickoff episode uh, of Jan 1, I think that that's going to be primarily because of inventory. (laughs) Now that we have a lot of people ordering electric vehicles, it's going to be a problem to try to get vehicles to them. And Tesla is included in that. But we'll see. Hopefully the OEMs that are bringing all these models to market this year will will be able to, excuse me, at least get some models delivered to customers. Next story is about GM. I just want to quickly follow up on the Silverado EV pickup truck that's coming out in 2023. You know, I mentioned in a show dedicated to them that they had sold out their initial reservations in 12 minutes for the uh, for their pickup trucks, and that's in the U.S. Canada followed shortly after. Now, what that represents is some people had criticized me saying, well, that's, you know, who knows how many that is that they sold out in 12 minutes. How big of a deal is that? Well, I'd like to tell you that when I picked up this data, which is probably now a couple of weeks old, so it's probably even more than this, but they had over 110,000 reservations in 12 minutes. And they sold out in the US and of course Canada followed suit, not in 12 minutes, but later on that day. It was very quick because I went to the website uh, and Canada was already marked as sold out for the initial run. Now that includes over 240 fleet operators that had put in orders as well, which is great to see the fleets pick this up. Now, the initial deliveries for these fleets are the spring of next year, and then the first consumer RST deliveries we should start seeing in early 2024. So it seems like GM is going to focus first on the fleets, probably get a handful of consumer deliveries within that mix, because not every consumer is going to be looking to spend $105,000 US or just under $120,000 Canadian for the top of the line RST model. But they may be looking to spend under 40000 for the work truck or whatever that's going to be in Canadian dollars. And of course, GM will have models that will cover various other price points within the mix. And of course, these various price points and options will allow for consumers to choose the truck that meets their capability and pricing needs. So again, I just want to congratulate GM and I want people that are out there watching me and, and you know following me, just remember, please have an open mind. It's not all about Tesla anymore, nor can it be all about Tesla, right? The world's a big place, 70 million vehicles. Nobody's building 70 million EVs today. We need every single OEM that's out there to be building all electrics, uh, in my mind, primarily all electrics, and we need them to be doing it as quick as possible. So don't slam GM, don't slam Ford, don't slam uh, Nissan, Toyota, Honda, whatever. Some of them are slower than others, but they are all slowly ramping up, some quicker than others. And this has to happen. And it's impressive when you see this kind of outpour, right? The F-150 sold out. They're they're doing all kinds of things. I'll talk about Ford in a sec. It's all kinds of things happening. So please, folks, keep an open mind when you're looking at all these announcements.
Now, I want to switch gears to Lincoln, as I mentioned just Ford. They're going to launch a full lineup of electric SUVs by 2026. They've come out and stated that. Um, of course, uh, Lincoln is an iconic brand, especially here in North America. And they want to introduce at least five new EV SUVs by 2026. Not that far away. Now, this includes the replacements, or it can even supplement to current gas-powered models, including the Corsair, the Nautilus, the Aviator, and the Navigator. The first of the new Lincoln EV SUVs will be a large crossover, about the Aviator size, and it will begin production in late 2024 or early 2025. And I'm really happy to, to say that it'll be at Ford's Oakville plant here in Ontario, Canada. Yay! The electrification of Lincoln is part of a broader plan by Ford to electrify its lineup with a $30 billion investment through 2030. Now, and further to this, some uh, news that just came out, Ford has stated that they intend to build 600,000 EVs per year by the end of 2023. That's only next year. They're ramping up production and expanding plants to handle this increased demand, and they're doing it really quickly. Sales, you know, of the Mustang Mach-E, whether you love it or not, and the E-Transit are beyond Ford's estimates, as they are, um, as are the reservations, excuse me, for the F-150 Lightning. As I mentioned earlier, they went through the roof. So together with EV production, Ford is investing in three new battery gigafactories as well, and they're going to be located in Tennessee and Kentucky in the United States. So I'm really happy to hear and see Ford put real money on this, uh, not a problem, but on to handling the solution of getting EVs to market quickly. They are really ramping up, putting the, uh, you know, the rubber where the rubber hits the road, basically. And I really hope they can achieve these goals. Well, the next story is kind of a fun one. It's, I guess, you know, it's the future and we're going back to the future and coming from the back from the future to the back. I don't know how, really how to loop that in, but DeLorean DMC will return in 2022 as a luxury electric sports car. The company that has the official rights to the DeLorean name aims to launch an all-electric DeLorean DMC this year. Former British engineer Stephen Wynne acquired the rights to the DeLorean name way back in 1995. Now, the new DeLorean company is considered the world's largest source for DeLorean parts and repairs and has teased the modernized fully electric DMC in a recent tweet. The reimagined DMC will be called the DeLorean Evolved. I like that. All we really know at this point is that there, it will be a luxury uh, sports car featuring an electric powertrain. Uh, you know, Mr. Fusion thing is attached to it. Who knows? Keep watching as this story as it evolves and uh, certainly would be cool to see these back on the roads as all electrics. Now, one company that's been pretty quiet, at least from a news story, is Faraday, and they finally have unveiled their version of their first model, which is planned for series production. Production of their FF91 is scheduled to begin in Hanford, California in the third quarter of this year. Now, there weren't really much details on the technology that Faraday Future provided in this announcement. All that was released were some images from quality control at the factory and of driving an FF91 in the production intent version. I'm personally really not a big fan of the looks of this uh, vehicle. However, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, as we all know, and I do wish them well. I hope they can scale up to some meaningful production. And finally, hey, there's more buzz about the buzz. Now, shortly before the world premiere coming up on March the 9th, VW Commercial Vehicles has officially announced key data on the series version of the ID Buzz for the first time, both the drive and the body. So far, there is still no confirmed information on the price and exact market launch. Now, they've confirmed that two versions will be launched, a five-seater ID Buzz and the three-seater ID Buzz Cargo. Both versions of the ID Buzz will start in 2022 with the 82 kilowatt hour battery pack and the 150 kilowatt electric motor on the rear axle, being rear wheel drive only. 
Now, official values for the range are not yet available. However, in some other reports that I've seen, there is talk of around 500 kilometers for this battery variant. And I believe that that's probably based on the WLTP range cycle. According to various reports, other battery variants and the all-wheel drive model are not expected until the end of next year, so still quite some time. And shortly after the start of production of the ID Buzz in the first half of the year, the European market launch is scheduled for autumn. I believe that's this year. The ID Buzz will also be launched in the USA afterwards, uh, maybe by the end of this year or certainly into 2023. As I mentioned, official prices have not yet been revealed. Most recently, however, there were reports that the base price for the passenger car model would be under 55,000 euros with the currently available 77 kilowatt hour battery. So lots of uh, videos that are coming out from German and European reporters that are getting to spend some time with the Buzz. Uh, looks to be a great vehicle, especially for family carrying, camping, all that kind of stuff going out. And of course, as a cargo variant. So stay tuned for more info. And I look forward to that launch in March. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thanks very much for taking the time to tune in. Hope you found some of these stories interesting. Um, still continue to peruse the news to see what's out there that's relevant. And if you are watching me on YouTube, much thanks as always. If you haven't subscribed, please do. It would uh, mean a lot if you did. And you can click that bell to get notified of upcoming episodes. Always humbly thanking my Patreon supporters. You know who you are. Thank you very much. If you're interested, you can check out the link below. Everybody, please continue to stay safe and keep your eyes on the EV marketplace. It's a busy, busy year. A lot of stuff going on. I've got a few cars lined up over the next couple of months to do reviews on, so I'm getting excited to start getting back in that saddle again. And again, everybody stay safe. Thank you very much for watching. It's much appreciated. And until the next time, I'll see you when I see you. Take care. <music>